All right, guys, on number 37, what we're trying to do is factor. So the first thing I do is I, as I see if there's anything, any common factors. And I notice that 3 and 10 and 7 don't have a common uh, numerical factor. But if I look at the variables, there's at least two p's in each of those. So I'm going to factor out p squared. And what I'm left with is 3 p squared plus 10 p plus 7. Because I factored out p squared. Factor those out. Factored out 2, left with 1. Factored out 2, left with 2. Okay? Now what I need to do is I need to factor this right here. Because I've already factored this, I need to factor that. Now, I'm going to do bottoms up, and I know Mr. Hines did factor by grouping. So if there's one you prefer versus the other, um, go ahead and do that one. But if you're still confused on, you know, you want to see this one done your way, then just ask your teacher um, tomorrow, okay? So 3 times 7, you always need to multiply this, the first times less, is 21. And you're trying to find the factors of 21 that add up to the middle term, 10. So the factors of 21 that add up to 10 happen to be 3 and 7. So what I do is I'm going to write p squared, just bring that down, and then I'm going to go ahead and write p plus 3, both positive to add up to positive 10 and multiply to negative positive 21, and then p plus 7. But remember, because I had a leading coefficient of 3, I have to then divide each of these by 3, not that, it's just these factors, because I'm factoring this right here. Now if it simplifies, then go ahead and simplify it, p plus 1, bring down the p squared, and then this one, if it doesn't simplify 7 over 3, bottoms up, bring the 3 right there, so 3p plus 7. And that is the full factored form. Okay? All right, so let's go to 38. All right, um, looking at this, numerically, 5, negative 1, and negative 6, nothing to factor out. Um, there's no k in, in, there's not a k in every term, so all I need to do at this point is do bottoms up. 5 times negative 6 is negative 30. So I'm trying to find the factors of that that add up to the negative 1, the middle term, okay? So, um, again, <laughs> they happen to be the numbers that we're multiplying right there. Is that always going to happen? No, but they do happen to be that. 5 and negative 6 add up to negative 1. If you're unsure of how to find the factors, what you can start doing is just write out your factors. 1 and 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 10, um, Four, I don't think four goes in there, five and six. And then you think, okay, I'm trying to add up to negative one and multiply to get a negative, which means one of these needs to be negative, and the one that has a difference of one is this, and the only way to add up to a negative is if the six is negative, the larger number, okay? So I'm going to write k plus five and k minus six, but remember there was a leading coefficient, other than just 1, so I have to remember to divide by that number. So I divide by 5. If it simplifies, simplify it. k plus 1. If it doesn't, and they don't, then move. Bottoms up, 5k minus 6, and there's your answer. Okay? All right, now let's look at 39. So 39 says, sketch a graph of the function. And what I kind of want to do is I want to see if you can do it without a calculator. Um, as far as graphing a quadratic, I know you've graphed a quadratic, but I don't know if you necessarily remember standard or vertex form. So when we're talking about vertex form, um, you're talking about y equals a times x minus h quantity squared plus k. So when you think about transformations, I don't know if you remember this, might, might have been a while, but anything on the outside when you're adding or subtracting, that's a shift up or down. So this would be up k. This right here is on the inside. So what you have to remember is that it's the opposite on the inside. So if it says x minus h, then that actually means I'm going to the right h. So that says that your vertex, when we're talking about a parabola, either up or down, there's a vertex at the point. That's point right at the top or in the bottom, okay? So that is that point. The vertex is going to be positive h and then k. So the h is the opposite, k stays the same. And then this A is a vertical stretch or compression. If there's a number in the front that is bigger than 1, then it's a vertical stretch by that factor. If it's a number less than 1 but bigger than 0, so uh, a fraction between 0 and 1, then that's a vertical compression. It makes it wider, okay? Uh, right quick, let's just a reminder. If I were to graph x squared, it would look like this. But if I were to graph negative x squared, it would look like this. So it would face down. So a negative reflects over the x-axis, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and start with number 39.
Number 39 says uh, graph y equals x minus 1 quantity squared plus 4. So I know that my vertex is opposite on the inside, same on the outside. So my vertex is at the point 1, 4. So I plot a plane. Now this is a positive quadratic, so I know that I'm going to open up. Now the easiest thing about graphing a quadratic is that you need to graph five points, okay? At least five if you can see them on here. If, if, it, if the graph runs out of space, then it's not your fault. Vertex, the points directly beside it, and then the points directly outside of that. Okay, so two on each side. But the great thing is that the first point is very easy. You follow this, okay? You're always going to go to the right one. It's always to the right one. Always. But then, whatever this is determines how high you go. So if I go to the right one, then I'm going to go up one. If it had been a negative, then I would have gone down one. But because, remember, parabolas are symmetrical, whatever happens on the right side also happens on the left. So I'm going to go left one and up one as well. Okay? If I were to actually plug two in right there, what, two minus one. So if I were to plug two in there, two minus one is one. One squared is one, and one plus four is five. And you see how at two, we were at five. Yeah? So now what I want to do is I want to find out this next point. Okay, so I don't have to plug in 2 to figure that one. That one I can figure out by that number right there. But to plug in, to figure out what happened at 3, I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. So 3 minus 1 quantity squared plus 4. 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. So at 3, I'm at 8. So that means at negative 1, I'm at 8. And that is enough to graph my parabola. And there you go. Do not draw a V. A V is an absolute value function. Make it a curve, okay? Okay, so let's do this one on 40. So let's talk about where we're going. Our vertex. Remember, it's opposite on the inside, so positive 3, same on the outside. So it's at the point 3, 3. Now, there's this negative in the front. And remember, if there's a negative in the front, then that means my parabola is going to open down, okay? But that also tells you this right here. Because remember, we always go to the right one. I'm going to go to the right one, so from 3 to 4. But because this is a negative one, I'm going to go down one as opposed to going up one in the previous, like in the previous problem. But symmetrical symmetry says uh, go, if, if going to the right one means going down one, then going to the left one also means going down one. So I need to figure out one more point. So I can either plug in 5 or I can plug in 1. I get the same answer. I'm going to go ahead and plug in 5 because I'd rather have a positive than a negative. Not that it matters. A negative. 5 minus 3, quantity squared, plus 3. 5 minus 3 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. So I've got negative 4 plus 3, and that is a negative 1. So at 5, I'm at negative 1. That means at 1, I'm at negative 1. Connect, and I've got my parabola. Okay? All right, let's go to 41. So my vertex opposite on the inside, negative 3. Same on the outside, so positive 4. When outside, I mean the plus or the minus, whatever's out here. So I'm going to go to negative 3 and positive 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Didn't have to do that, so that's all right. Okay. And then I know I'm going to go to the right one, always to the right one, and I'm going to go down 3 because it says negative 3. So right one, down 3. 1, 2, 3. Left one, down 3. So I need to figure out one more point. Okay to the left and to the right, I can go either plug in negative 1 or I can plug in negative 5. I might as well just plug in negative 1 make it easy on myself. So I've got negative 3 times negative 1 plus 3 quantity squared plus 4. So negative 1 plus 3 is 2. So I've got negative 3 times 2 squared, which is 4. So negative 3 times 4 plus 4, that's a negative 12 plus 4, that's a negative 8. So that means at negative 1, when x is negative 1, I'm at negative 8. So I'm going to go down here, plot my point. That means I'm also at negative 8 at negative 5. And then there we go. Now this, I multiplied by a 3 in the front. And that's why it's called a vertical stretch, because it's a lot skinnier. We stretch the function. So if a normal one looks like this, then a stretched version would look like that, whereas a compressed version would look like that. You're vertically compressing versus vertically stretching something. Okay? All right. Um, on this one, vertex, positive on the inside, opposite on the inside, 
same on the outside. So I'm going to go to the point 3, negative 3. First point, I always go to the right one. This is a positive 2, so I'm going to go up 2. Left one, also up 2. I need to figure out one more point, so I'm going to go to 5. So 2 times 5 minus 3, quantity squared minus 3. 5 minus 3 is 2. Good Lord, have it always been when it's always been 2. Okay, so 2 times 2 squared is 4 minus 3, so 8 minus 3 is 5. So I know at 5, I'm at 5. And at 1, I'm at 5 because they're symmetrical. So I'm going to connect. And there's my problem. Okay, so when it's vertex form, you don't need a calculator to graph it. But when it's in standard form, I mean, okay, you still don't necessarily need one. Um, you could figure out the vertex. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember this from Algebra 1, but as far as vertex goes, the x coordinate of your vertex, your h, I should say h, is negative b over 2a. And remember that b and, and a, this is ax squared plus bx plus c. So you could find h by doing this. And if you want to find any y value, plug in the x value. You know what I mean? So I'm going to go ahead and do that, but there's always the calculator. So if I needed to, I could go to y equals, type it in. The equation is 2x squared minus 8x and then plus 6. Okay. If I go to my table, first of all, I've got to change my auto. If I go to table, second table, then I can start plotting points. Okay. So you might notice that right here, it's 6 and 0 and then negative 2, and then it starts repeating itself, which leads me to believe that this is the vertex. Okay, so let's see if we get x is our x value, 2 is our x value of a vertex, and negative 2 is our y. Okay, so remember, you could plot those points, but I do want to show you this. So h equals negative b, b is already negative 8, so let's go positive 8, over 2 times a, and a is 2. Okay, so 8 divided by 4 is 2. So I know that my vertex is the point 2 comma. Well, if I want to find any y value, knowing an x value, I'm just going to plug it in. So if x equals 2, 2 times 2 squared minus 8 times 2 plus 6. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 2 times 8 is 16 and then plus 6. So 8 plus 6 is 14 and 14 minus 16 is negative 2. So my vertex is at the point 2, negative 2. Okay, um, A does not change, either in vertex or standard form. So if I had A times X minus H quantity squared plus K, these are the same A's, okay? So the A is 2. So always go to the right one and then go up or down that number. Go left one also, and there you go. So I only need one more point. I'm going to plug in 4 into this equation. 2 times 4 squared minus 8 times 4 plus 6. 4 squared is 16, and 2 times 16 is 32. Minus, oh, good lord, I was going to say 6 times 8. 32, 4 times 8. We'll just cancel each other out. And then plus 6. So at 4, I'm at 6. And then at 0, I'm at 6. Oosh. And then there's my problem. Okay? All right. So let's do it one more time. Remember, A is negative 1, B is 8, C is negative 19. And if I'm trying to find vertex, remember H is negative B over 2A. So negative B, negative 8 over 2 times A, which is negative 1. Negative 8 over negative 2, because that's a negative 2, is a positive 4. So I'm, I know my vertex is at the point 4, comma, and if I want to find a y value, I'm going to plug it in. Negative 4 squared plus 8 times 4 minus 19. Now, this negative is not part of the 4. It's negative 4 squared, okay? 4 squared is 16, so negative 16 plus 32 minus 19, okay? 32 minus 16 is 16, and 16 minus 19 is negative 3, okay? So I like to combine two things at one time and then another thing. Okay, so my vertex is the point 4, negative 3. 
So I'm going to go to the 4 and then go down to negative 3 and put my dot. Now the slope, not the slope, <laughs> we're not linear, is quadratic. Remember you always go to the right one and I'm going to go right one and then because it's a negative 1, I'm going to go down 1. And I'm going to do the same thing right here. Okay. Now I'm going to, I need to figure out one more point. And since 6, as far as like plugging this in, 2 would be easier for me to plug in than 6. Because when you plug in 6, they start getting bigger and bigger. So I'm going to plug in negative 2 squared plus 8 times 2 minus 19. So I've got negative 4 plus 16 minus 19. Okay, 16 minus 19 is negative 3. Negative 4 and negative 3 is negative 7. So I know that at 2 I'm at negative 7, which means it's 6 I'm at negative 7. And then I connect, and I've got my parabola. Okay, so there's the graphing. Now let's talk about quadratic formula. So quadratic formula, what I need to do is I need to use x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. All of it's over 2a. Okay, so just as a reminder, make sure you know what a, b, and c are. a is 1, b is negative 4, and c is negative 16. Okay, so x equals, or in this case it really should say b equals. Okay, so b equals opposite b, which is positive 4, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 4 squared, if you want to go ahead and write positive 16, that's fine. It's definitely not negative 16 because negative 4 squared is a parenthesis. Negative times a negative is a positive. Okay, don't forget that. Minus 4 times a is 1. You don't have to write it down. C is negative 16. Okay, all over 2 times a, which is 1. If you don't want to write that 1 down, that's fine. Okay, so 4 plus or minus. So I've got the square root of 16 minus, actually it's going to be a plus, because what I suggest you do, if you're, if you're working this out, especially with a calculator, then you need to, um, just to make sure you don't make mistakes, type it in just like you see it. Parentheses, negative 4, nope, yep, parentheses, negative 4 quantities squared, and then minus 4 times 1 times negative 16. And if you want to do that, just to make sure you get correct what is underneath the radical, then you can do that. So I'm going to go ahead and make that 80. Don't forget all that. Okay. So that's 80. And then over 2, right? Okay, so I want to know what perfect square goes into 80. And I'm pretty sure um, 16 is the biggest one. But if you think about your list of perfect squares, you've got 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64. Um, go down the list and start seeing if it, you want the biggest one that goes into it. So if I divide 80 by 16, 80 divided by 16 is 5. And the point of that is to simplify your radical, okay? So 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 times 5 over 2. What's the square root of 16? Well, it's 4. So 4 goes on the outside because I took the square root of it. Think of it as the square root of 16 times the square root of 5. That's 4. It's outside. I leave the 5 inside and I divide by 2. Now, if, these bo if both of these terms are divisible by something that this is divisible by, then I can factor it out. If they're divisible by this number, then I can go ahead and divide it out. 4 and 4 divide by 2 twice, and 2 goes into itself one time. And when you divide by 1, you don't necessarily have to say that. So my final answer would be 2 plus or minus 2 square root of 5. Okay? All right. So let's do 46. I've got n equals opposite b, so positive 5, plus or minus the square root of b squared, negative 5 squared, minus 4 times a, 2 times c, negative 88, all over 2 times a. Okay, I'm going to type it in, just like I did before. I already know that negative 5 squared is positive 25, so I'm going to write 25 minus 4 times 2 times negative 88. And inside that, I get 5 plus or minus the square root of 729 over 4. 
Now I knew 80 was not a perfect square because 81 is and so 80 isn't. 81 is square root of, um, the square root of 81 is 9. But I'm going to go ahead and try the square root of 70 29 because if it is, I don't want to miss that. And it is. It's 27. So here's what I've got. 5 plus or minus 27 because the square root of 7 29 is 27 over 4, which means I have two answers. I mean, I have two answers here, but they're radical form. I can't simplify that. But I could say what 5 plus 27 divided by 4 is, Oops. and what 5 minus 27 divided by 4 is. So 5 plus 27 is 32, and 32 divided by 4 is 8. 5 minus 27 is negative 22, and negative 22 divided by 4. 4 doesn't go into 22, but they both divide by 2, so I'm going to say 11 and 2, so negative 11 halves. So x in equals both of these. Don't put parentheses because that looks like a coordinate point. Okay. Okay, uh, 47. So on 47, I've got k equals opposite b, so positive 4, plus or minus the square root of b squared, negative 4 squared, minus 4 times a times c, all over 2 times a. So I've got 16. So I'm doing 16 minus 4 times 6 times negative 5. And I get 136. So I've got 4 plus or minus the square root of 136 all over 12. So does 136 divide by any perfect squares? Well, 136, does it divide by 4? Okay. Does 34 divide by anything? 34 divided by 2 is 17. So 2 and 17, no. So 34 and 4 is, is, is the biggest, 4 is the largest perfect square that goes into it. So think of this as the square root of 4 times 34. Square root of 4 is 2, so I'm going to write 4 plus or minus 2. S square root of 4 is 2. There isn't a perfect square in 34, and then divide it by 12. Now 4, 2, and 12 all divide by 2. So if I divide that by 2, I get 2. If I divide that by 2, I get 1. If I divide that by 2, I get 6. So my final answer is 2 plus or minus... 1 square root of 34 all over 6. And you don't have to write the 1. Okay. So let's do this one. Now, what you might notice is that this is not in standard form. Everything is not in the same size, so I need to get it that way. 2p squared. I'm going to add 8p, and I'm going to subtract 7 and set that equal to 0. So now I need to do the quadratic formula. p equals opposite b, so negative 8, opposite the middle term, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so 8 squared, minus 4 times a, 2 times c, negative 7, all over 2 times a. So 8 squared is 64, so I've got 64 minus 4 times 2 times negative 7, and I've got 120. So negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 120, all over 4. So when I think about the list of my perfect squares, I've got 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49. When you see the divide, one way you can do this, guys, is to go ahead and go to, I'm just going to show you this real quick, 120 divided by x. And if I go to second table set, and I go to ask, and if I go to second table, so remember, my equation is 120 divided by x. So I'm saying, does 120 divide by 4? And it does. Does 120 divide by 9? Nope. 16? Nope. Not evenly. Not evenly. 25? Nope. 36? Nope. And 49. So it's getting less and less likely that it divides by anything else other than 4. And especially because if you look at 30, if the number, when you, if you divide by 4 and this number still has more square or perfect square div divisors, then you're not done. But 30 is 2 and 15, so you're done. So I'm going to write negative 8 plus or minus, keeping in mind that's 4 times 30. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 30 stays inside. 4, 8, 2, and 4 all divide by 2. So that's a negative 4, that's a 1, that's a 2. Oh, I didn't even see that. So negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 30, all over 2. And that is my answer. Okay. All right, let's do number 49. 
So on number 49, I need to get everything on the right side, or on the left side in this case, kind of the right side, right, the right, correct side. 6b squared minus 11b minus 1. So I'm going to minus that over and minus that over. Okay. Uh, b equals opposite of b. That's kind of confusing. Um, so opposite of the middle. So positive 11 plus or minus the square root of b squared. Minus 4 times a is 6 times c is negative 1. All over 2 times 6. So I've got negative 11 squared, which is 121. So 121 minus 4 times 6 times negative 1. And I get 145. So 11 plus or minus the square root of 145 all over 12. 145, does it divide by 9? It does not. 145 doesn't divide by 4. Um, I, it doesn't divide by 25. It might be done far as like finding a perfect square. And if a perfect square doesn't divide into it, then we're done. Okay? I probably should have checked that. Go to 145 divided by x. And it doesn't divide by any of these perfect squares. Um, that's 7, so 64. Nope. 81. Nope. Okay, it's not going to. Okay. Alright, let's do this one. I need to get all the terms on one side and, and combine like terms. So I think I'm going to subtract 2x here and there from, from both sides of the equation and the, I stacked it with that one because they have, they're similar terms. So I've got x squared minus 5x minus 6 equals 0. And I want to use this, solve this using quadratic formula. So x equals opposite b, so positive 5, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a is 1 times c is negative 6 all over 2 times a which is 1 so 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 plus 24 because that's 24 so I've got 49 all over 2 and the square root of 49 is 7 so 5 plus or minus 7 over 2 well, remember if it's a number I need to go ahead and simplify 5 plus 7 divided by 2 5 minus 7 divided by 2. 5 plus 7 is 12, and 12 divided by 2 is 6. 5 minus 7 is negative 2, and negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. So my answers are x equals 6 and negative 1. And I really should have been saying that all along, b equals and whatnot. I know that's not this, okay? All right, last two. Now these are inequalities, and I don't know if you remember how to do these, but let's go through them real quick. I want to graph each of these functions, and these inequalities, and think about what these symbols mean, okay? So this is saying um, y is greater than or equal to negative x squared plus 4. Well, x squared is a parabola. A negative means instead of opening up, it opens down, and then plus 4 means I translate up 4, okay? So I remember uh, my y-intercept, I'm just going to, well, one way is to just think of it like this. You could think of it as vertex being this. So the vertex is opposite that and then that. So 0, 4. Or just a parabola shifted up 4. This is a negative 1. A is negative 1. So I'm going to go the right one always to the right one and then down 1 and to the left one and down 1 because that's a negative 1. And then I'm going to plug in 2. So negative 2 squared plus 4. So negative 4 plus 4. That's 0. So that means that's also 0. And let's do another one, 3. Negative 3 squared plus 4, so negative 9 plus 4 is negative 5. So at 3, I meant negative 5, which means at negative 3, I lost all negative 5. Okay, now this says greater than or equal to. Now when you're graphing and it says equal to, that means it's a solid line. But when it's not equal to, it's a dotted line because you're not including the line, okay? It does say greater than, so I'm going to go ahead and draw arrows pointing up from the line, okay? But this one says y is less than 6. Remember, it just says y. So I go to the y-axis at 6, and because it doesn't say equal to, I'm going to draw a dotted line. And it says less than, so I'm going to draw my arrows going down. So when I'm trying to figure out the region for which um, these inequalities are both satisfied, 
it's where you're below this one but above that one. So you can't be inside here because that's below that one. So the answer is going to be all of this region because that's where you're both above this and below that line. And that's your answer. All right, so last one. Just right quick, just to make sure you remember. Y equals the absolute value of X, that's the V. Because remember, the absolute value of 0 is 0, the absolute value of 1 is 1, the absolute value of 2 is 2. The absolute value of negative 1 is also positive 1, and the absolute value of negative 2 is also positive 2. So it's the V function, okay? So when they say Y is greater than the absolute value of X, I'm going to graph the absolute value of X here, here. If this had had a 2 right there, I would have gone up um, a slope of 2, because that's a linear. And then I'll have one opposite here. So unlike a parabola, this has a constant slope on either side. Okay? It says greater than, which means it's a dotted line. It's not solid. And it says greater than, which means my arrows should be pointing up. Okay? I need to graph above that. And now I need to graph this line, okay, or this inequality. My y-intercept mx plus b, mx plus b, y-intercept is 3, and my slope is 1 third, so I'm going to go up 1 and over 3. Up 1, 1, 2, 3. Up 1, 1, 2, 3. Down 1 and to the left 3. So down 1, 1, 2, 3. Down 1, 1, 2, 3. And that's enough to sketch. It says less than or equal to, so I'm going to draw a solid line. And it does say less than, so I'm going to draw below. So what is the only region that is greater than the absolute value, so above it, but less than this? And the only time I'm less than this line and greater than that line is in this region right there. So that is the answer. Okay? All right. That should help, hopefully. Please let us know if there's any more questions in class and we can answer them, okay? And come before school if you have any more questions before the quiz.